know what's true. I just know. I feel it. <laughs> well, let's just say I've seen a thing or two in my day. <laughs> Do you accept everything you read? If it's in the book, it must be true. Or trust every expert? I trust this guy right here. His show is called The Trusty Expert Show. Or believe everything you watch on TV or social media? They wouldn't put liars on TV. If you're drowning in a sea of information and ideas, how do you form beliefs based on reality and not just on opinions or feelings? Today, we are giving you four tips on how to think objectively. Number one, use critical thinking. Everybody loves to criticize. And it's not hard to find people that love to post critically about others. You, period, R, period, killing, period, the, period, planet. Your president killed the turtles! But how many people love to actually think critically? <gasps> what is that? Critical thinking means objectively criticizing your own thoughts, not believing things strictly on what people say or how you feel. It's more about how you think than what you think. Your whole life will be filled with people telling you what to think, and your own biases and feelings will tell you all this other stuff that you need to think. <gasps> But if you have critical thinking skills, you will not believe things simply based on face value or feelings. You have to be willing to challenge assumptions, even your own. The best way to challenge assumptions is to ask tough questions. Humans are the real problem causing climate change. So why in the past did the climate change so drastically before people started industrializing? Just remember when asking questions, do it genuinely with an attitude that actually wants to learn. For example, what if you ask the same question like this? Why did the climate change so drastically before people started industrializing? You may be asking the question, but your attitude is communicating that you've already decided the answer and you don't really want to learn. This attitude usually just leads to shouting matches that get everybody angry and stressed. A good question is one that provokes thought and opens up dialogue with others so that you can get closer to the truth. Number two. Do your own research. When people share their ideas, how do you know which are right and which are wrong? Do you just reject them all? I can't trust anyone! They're all out to get me! Ah! Mm, not quite. You have to do your own research to find the truth. Find books or watch videos on the topic. Ask other people what their thoughts are. The more sources you get information from, the more well-rounded your perspective will be. Imagine for a second that three blindfolded people have to describe an elephant in front of them. If you only listen to one of them, you will likely get a narrow perspective. Feels like wood. Feels like a blanket. Kinda feels like a rope. A more holistic and accurate understanding comes when you get information from multiple people feeling the elephant. This is what happens when you do research. You get more understanding the more sources you get information from. Hmm. If someone tells you that the world is going to end in 12 years because of global warming, before you have a panic attack and sell your house and your car, get other opinions on the matter and look at the data for yourself. As you pick through sources of information, consider the credibility and history of the source. Do their beliefs align with their actions? If someone is actively claiming that melting ice will soon swallow the world's beaches, but your research shows that investors are still buying waterfront properties, consider whether their actions match their words. Get as much information as possible and then use your best judgment to form a belief based off of that research. The truth Truth will begin to emerge the more perspectives you listen to and learn from. Number three, be open to changing your mind. Do not ever assume that you're right or wrong. It's easy to think that you're special and that you have some keen ability and sense to see things that other people can. Me and my dog, Rudolph, it's a gift we've got. Well, I just get a certain feeling about things right around here. You know, I can just kind of feel the situation, feel. I didn't choose the knowledge, bro. It chose me. Maybe, but probably not. Your experience is important, but be cautious about forming your entire belief system around your particular experience. An important step to opening up your mind is to avoid tying your self-worth and your identity to no, your opinions. Stop antagonizing me! Doing this keeps your mind closed because if somebody disagrees with your personal beliefs, you probably feel personally attacked and go into defense mode. No! On the other hand, if you detach your identity from your opinions, it frees you to challenge your own beliefs and opens your mind to truth you never would have found before. Number four, beware of emotional thinking. How many times have you heard someone say, just how I feel about it? No evidence, no data, just their feelings. 
Now, before we beat up other people about this, we have to remember that this is really easy for all of us to do. Emotions are the greatest obstacle to objective thinking because they cloud our minds from seeing the truth clearly. One of the most common is what people refer to as thinking like a victim. In other words, blaming other people or things for your problems. My life is terrible because everybody's out to get me. We all know someone in our lives like this, but let's face it. We all do it from time to time. So how do we know if we're thinking this way? Try this. When hardships arise, take a step back and observe your thoughts. Does your mind start looking for people or things to blame it on? It's my parents' fault. It's the government's fault. It's society's fault. Or do you start looking at what you could do differently to make things better? The truth is, you have more control over your life than anyone or anything else. So the next time you feel the draw to blame other people or things, Tell yourself these words. I am not a victim and I can think for myself. You could say it in your head. I am not a victim. Or you could say it out loud. I am not a victim. It may feel cheesy, but it's more helpful than you think and puts your mind in a position of power to think clearly. As you can see, thinking objectively is not as easy as it sounds. But in today's age with everyone telling you what to think, it's more important than ever that we learn to think for ourselves and make decisions based on reality. It takes practice, but with the right attitude and a genuine desire to learn, you are well on your way to objective thinking. Thank you for watching this uh, first episode of the new series of How To. Yes. Make sure you go, you subscribe to the YouTube. Yes. And also go to PragerUKids.com to see what we're doing over there. <laughs> and post an emoji of a drumstick. Yes. A chicken drumstick. Chicken drumstick. If you could tell us why we want you to put a tr chicken drumstick in the comments below, then we'll give you a shout out. All right. Can I ride the bike? Aha! Don't ride that bike. Woo! Now listen here, you little walnut brains. Humans, that's me and you, mostly you. I am social distancing. Well, come get your chickens. No! Ah! Ah! My leg! Wash those windows, boys. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs>